So I got an interesting conversation last night with a video editor. They asked me what I've been doing for audio lately for wireless. And I showed them something with the mayor of Seattle and said, this is what I recorded it on. This little, sorry, it's in a black case. The Rogo Wireless 2. And a little lavalier microphone similar to one of these. Hold on. Just one of these. That's all I did. I said it saved me because we were supposed to have an F8N Pro out there connected to their audio system. And unfortunately, that didn't work out. And then everything was Union Hall there. So essentially, they had to get permission. And we had, what, like three minutes before we start, four minutes before we start, trying to hack a solution together. So I just mounted this on the mirror, went forward. Cool thing about this, and if you want to listen beyond this one minute, then you'll get some pretty cool hacks. If not, we'll just use this as a one-minute piece. Continuing on, three huge hacks on this. Number one, these, I keep it in a rubber case, just keeps them safe. Uh, these can be used as your everyday lavalier. 2.4 gig, pretty normal tech now. Of course, some people say it's not UHF. Clear. Not worried about it. Uh, it works in 80% of the areas uh, where I need UHF. I know where to get the microphones for that. I know to rent those. But these, nothing. I mean, for a $1,000 kit to carry around, I have two of these, two of these, two of these, and... Two of these, these are cardio microphones. Uh, the other was omnidirectional and hybrid cardio. Uh, just awesome. Thousand dollar kit does the job for me. Works as my recorder because inside of here it has onboard recording, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. It's great for voice. I wouldn't use it for instruments, but I use it for voice. Uh, does the job. Cool thing on this one though. If it loses contact with the receiver, there's a marker that goes on the audio, and then when you basically upload it into your computer through their app, you can see where it was disconnected from the receiver. This is huge and important, especially if someone needs editor's notes. You know, I, I tend to send notes to all the editors so that they know where to adjust the audio, what I believe should be done. You know, the benefit of, you know, just giving a little bit of information. So if I know this disconnected somewhere between, you know, two minutes in and or five minutes in, they can check it and go, oh, yeah, that's where it is. We'll fix it. We'll pull the audio from this file versus the one that came on the camera or went into the F8N or went into the mix pre or went into any one of the sound design recorders. It's pretty cool. Secondarily, What's really, really nice on these is the USB-C interface. This is really, really cool. So for me, I love the ability to send out this microphone, this, tell a client to turn it on, turn this on, put this on, and plug it into this like a headphone and talk into your computer on a Zoom or on you know Teams meeting, if they're going to be the keynote presenter. This is huge. Because when I'm doing front of house work or sound reinforcement work, having someone come off of Zoom or any other digital source or remote source that sounds really clean, really crisp, doesn't have an echoey sound, and going into a large PA system through an M32, heavenly just heavenly saves a lot of issues also going into the live stream so sometimes we do a hybrid where we'll have an event coming in where they'll actually be piped into the live stream itself and into the room it makes a huge difference because the sound quality is great the other part that's surprising on this same interface same interface connects to a cell phone like what i'm doing right now with the samsung uh, or with the iphone or an iPad, which gives your live streaming source. So say, for example, if you're using one of these phones as a remote camera someplace, which we do a lot. It's easy to do nowadays. I love the fact that StreamYard, EVMux, uh, Restream, 
a whole bunch of just consumer grade, just a hair under pro, which everyone seems to use. Uh, Zoom, you can have really high end audio and stereo audio, so you could actually have two of these connected at once and do you know, a two person interview right there with your cell phone and have great quality. So there's a lot of benefits to this particular system. I'm looking forward to the wireless pro system because it has the ability to use the screw on locking plates. That will make a difference. This does not, it's just a regular headphone jack. So the only concern I ever really have is, is will this get pulled out? Now from the base setup, you do need the app on your phone or the app on the computer. So we're going to go a little bit further into it in the last couple of minutes of this. But you do need the app for this to be maximized. You have a bunch of different options in it. So the first one is you can really adjust what that button does. So you can be a recorder. It can be a mute button. It can do nothing and a few other options in between. You also can determine the file used for recording audio. So there's an MP3 file, which I think max out to 320 kilobits per second, which I think is absolutely useless. That's my opinion. You do take it with a grain of salt. Uh, the other option is to switch it to uncompressed, which is a 24-bit, uh, 48 kilohertz file. Now they do say that you can export this file if you do it through the app as a 32-bit file, but it's not a true 32-bit file. It's just the way it is. It was recorded 24-bit, so I recommend just sticking with 24-bit. Another couple of options on this is you can switch to a pad on here. If you know that the person is talking is extremely loud or the situation can be allowed, we ran into this, um, what was it, eight months ago? Uh, the, live band on Pier 62 and it just turned out they didn't mic the the pier we don't know why but we're doing the live stream and there's no sound coming from anywhere on the pier for this band and that was a problem because it needs to go into live stream what i do i grab two of these two of these hooked them up uh, i got an xlr to headphone jack cable Threw it on the board, threw it out there. We got good sound. Now, did I clip the microphones? Maybe I did. It's a possibility. But the cool part was I put the pad on both of them, so I had a 10 decibel pad, and we were able to keep the audio very, very clean, and it sounded really good, surprisingly good for a live stream. Now, were we pumping that into like a PA speaker system? No, that would be atrocious. But quick, last-minute solution, worked really good. So I'm just saying there's a lot of versatility. Another nice piece is that this can be used as its own omnidirectional microphone. This saved us at that last um, business conference that we were doing. We just couldn't get to their audio system. So I recorded the mayor. Great. Awesome. But they were doing a four-person panel. And they also would like some of that audio recorded. So set this down facing towards two of the presenters and then set this down set it towards two of the presenters or talents or hosts how we want to call them um got the audio sounded decent didn't sound great it didn't sound phenomenal but it sounded acceptable enough to be used but not something i would call praiseworthy but at least it got us there um had I had one of the eighth inch omnidirectional microphones for you know conference rooms, I probably would have had really great audio, but the fact that I could throw that up there and have that ready to go really sets it apart. I'm looking forward to the Rogo two the Rogo Pro at some point here. Once it's available and I get one, I get a pair, I will let you know how versatile it is in comparison to this. If it only added an extra 10 or 15 percent, which means you know, like a little plug in, uh, the supposedly they're supposed to have the ability to add another microphone to it at the base, that's more than enough. But the fact that that's 32 bit float, that's going to be a very unique situation where will it eliminate the need for my field recording kit? 
on certain video shoots, especially if it's just like a singular talk, head, I'm going to have a recorder here. I'm going to have my Atomo sitting on the camera. I'm going to be recording ProRes, and I'm going to be recording a 24-bit file on the Atomos. So the question mark comes out, will I still need my F8 on single talking head people, interactions, especially if I'm going to lab them up? Now, I will still need, well, no, I won't because I, I have the, uh, yeah, this is where it's going to get kind of complicated because I use a lot of the Sennheiser AXV systems. I think that's what it's called, or AVX systems. And they work really, really good. We very, very rarely have any issues with those. Using the Sony FX30, I have the uh, ability to go ahead and use the XLR inputs with the handle. So, I mean, I'm really I'm running into an issue where a year ago I was using the f 8 in all the time picked up an f8n pro and i'm finding the more of this technology that comes out from like road and other places i'm not really using the f8n pro that often i'm still using it don't get me wrong there are situations where i definitely need it but in the normal talking head interviews or things like this I'm finding that i don't need that because this unit already works as the recorder and it takes one piece out of the puzzle and i'm a little concerned and i'm going to continue on a little bit so if you guys just want to go on to another video that's cool but i'm a little concerned that audio engineers that are normally on set for small productions and when i say small production i'm talking 10k or less small productions where we would bring an audio engineer in just to handle lavaliers, will we need them? Especially someone who is, you know, a really good one. And I, I, I don't mind spending, you know, five hundred to twelve hundred dollars a day, depending on their skill levels, to have someone there to make sure that when it goes into, when it gets to our editor, there's very little to nothing that they have to do, which saves money on the back end. Uh, allows them to function on more creativity on the edit versus fixing audio or having to bring in a secondary audio engineer to basically fix all the audio we captured on set. So the big question is, how much of this will eliminate the need of having that person there or will it augment having them there? And that, that, that's the big question mark. Because my audio people, anyone who's an audio engineer on the set is, to me, in, in a lot of ways, is more important than my cameraman. And, and there's going to be people that, that won't agree with me on this, but I can fix bad camera work with purchased B-roll. <laughs> it's kind of sad. But hear me out here. I can fix almost any bad video with good B-roll. And I'm talking any bad video with good B-roll. Uh, because I can get, how do I put it? I can get really, really good B-roll to cover up the fact that we only had like maybe two minutes of good video to work with and make it look good. But if the audio we recorded sounds terrible, so say, for example, um, we have the voiceover of the person and it's got a ton of background noise and everything else, so we had a challenge at um, we had a, at what used to be Key Arena, so what is it called? Climate Pledge now. We had the interviews, we had to do them when... There was like an hour and a half delay, and because of that, now we're into the game, and the DJ's going and everything else, so we had to mic up a specific way. Uh, so you can do it. It's just a, kind of a pain. Um, if it wasn't for good audio engineering, we would not have had the interviews. We wouldn't have had a 30-second piece talking about her award from the WNBA. Th that's the difference. That's the main difference. Okay, thanks. All right, got to go. Peace.